Welcome back to the Crochet Kratos with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Scrubbing Waffle Crochet Dishcloth. This is a really fabulous pattern. We're gonna be doing the waffle stitch here and it is amazing with this particular new yarn. It's called Lily Sugar and Cream. It's called Scrub Off where Scrub Off has been added to it. It's still 100% cotton but with the vibrant colors of this yarn you'll see that it's really quite fun to work with. Today we're gonna get started. You'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook to play and then I'm gonna show you the stitch work involved. I'm also gonna teach you how to change the size of their uh, dishcloth just in case you'd like to make it bigger or smaller. Just note that if you make it bigger you may require more yarn balls. So on screen here is the scrubbing bobbles dishcloth and I wanna show you really more like the yarn itself. So what you're gonna find is that the scrub off is mixed into these yarn balls just like you see but it's not always the same color. The scrub off could be a variegated or it could be a solid and it's really quite fun and addictive to be able to watch this play itself out. So as I was working on this one here I had a solid scrub off section and then I had a solid uh, green here of the regular cotton. It's all 100% cotton. It's just processed differently to give you the scrubbing power. So what we have is the next time the scrub off appears it's variegated and then a different shade of green and then this one kind of came back into play to give it a really uh, amazing look. So I found with myself is that I'm just staring at the ball and I realized that everything is kind of different inside. So if you see this red here it doesn't return until nearly to the end of the project. So it's really quite fun to be able to work with this yarn is that you'll find yourself I'll probably staring at the ball and seeing what's next to come into your crochet hook. So without further ado let's take a look at the pattern as far as getting it st ourselves started. I'm gonna teach you how to change the size just in case you're interested. So let's get ourselves started. We're gonna start off with a slip knot. Now if you'd like to match exactly what you see I need you to chain 41. If you would like to change the size you need to chain in multiples of four plus one. So four, four, four and then add one at the end. So I'm just gonna do a multiple of um, uh, three multiples of four. So one, two, three, four and then one, two, three, four and one, two, three and four. So at the end I just have to add one if I'm doing it like this or you can go to chain 41 to match exactly what you want for the pattern. Let's begin row number one. Let's begin row number one. You're gonna go four chain from the hook so just count it back. So one, two, three, turn it over and get the back loop of the, the um, chain and just double crochet. And I want you to double crochet in your entire chain going all the way across. Your yarn may change the texture on you as you get there but if, uh, if it does no big deal. Just work itself out and it still looks amazing. So continue then all the way down your chain. One double crochet into each. So it came all the way to the end. It just happened to change color when it got there. No big deal. I'm not worried about it. It all works its way out eventually. So you're going to just chain three counts as a double crochet for the first one. So I'm using the scrub off section here. So we're gonna do one double crochet front post around the next one here and just wrap the hook and going around the front post only. So in one side and out the other and just double crochet around the post. And now it's saying to do one double crochet uh, back post around the next three. So the next three in a row will each be a back post. So just move it forward to just to access it. Okay so one just come from behind and then back out two and then wrap from behind and back out. So that was three in a row. So once those three in a row are done come back to the and do the front one. So just wrap the hook coming around the front one, pull through and that's a front uh, post double crochet and then the next three in a row again are each going to be a back post. So you're gonna repeat that same patterning going all the way across in order to make it work. So there's three in a row and then eventually you'll hit the other side. So the one just before you hit the other side, the one, the second one in will be a front post double crochet and then the last one is just going to be um, uh, a double crochet in the last stitch. So just going right, don't go into a, a gap, go right into the turning chain itself and just double crochet to keep the balance. Okay, so no matter if you were did the chaining of 41 or in multiples of four plus one you would end up in the same spot. Let's uh, continue to row number three. 
As we continue to row number three, we're gonna turn our work, but before I do, see these ones that are jumping in front? We wanna keep those in front. So we're gonna be looking to that as our guide in order to do it. So when we turn it around, we're looking at the back of the project for row number three. So this chain three counts as your first double crochet. And we're gonna do one double crochet around the back post. The, that is the one that is jumping forward when you turn it this way. So by keeping that as a back post on this one, you are actually keeping that um, ribbing being consistent on that side. Now it says to do one double crochet in each of the next three. So the next three in a row, see how they're jumping out in front of you? You can see that this one here is around a post. Those are each going to be a double crochet. So just three in a row. So one, two, and three. So you're gonna repeat the pattern all the way. So this one here, do you see that? So that means it's gonna be a back post and keep it as a back post. And then the next three in a row are just regular double crochets. And you, I want you to do that all the way down to the end of your line. And eventually you'll get close to it. So when you get the second last one, keep it as a back post. And then in the turning chain, place in one double crochet. So let's turn and work. So we're gonna repo, re, uh, redo now rows number two uh, and three until we get to a total height of 10 inches. So let's review number two again. Chain up three counts as a double crochet and you're gonna keep the first one here just like you see. It's already in the front post. You're gonna keep it as a front post to so wrap and going around inside to keep it on the front. And now the next three in a row are each gonna be a back post double crochet. So wrap and come in from behind and pop it back out and those three are a back post. So what this is doing is creating a ridge to give you the waffle look. Okay, this one's in the front post. You can see it so I want you to keep it as a front post and then the next three in a row are each a back post. So if you can just keep an eye on what is repeating, it just gets really easy to follow. And then eventually you get to the other side. So the one just be before the ending is a front post double crochet. So you see you're keeping the ribbons, uh, ribbing up front and the last one is a double crochet in the turning chain. I found with myself it's easy to actually find these um, these strands at the end. It doesn't look like it would be able to but your hook just seems to find it. So now we're gonna repeat row number three again. So we're gonna chain up three counts as a double crochet. This one here we wanna keep that as a back post double crochet to keep the ribbing on that back side. And now the next three in a row are each a double crochet. So when you're looking at the back of the project it's really quite simple to be able to follow. And I'm also keeping an eye on the yarn ball too because I want to see out of curiosity on what my projects are, what yarn is gonna change to next. So this is gonna be a back post double crochet to keep it there. And then the next three are just double crochets. And you continue in that same manner going all the way across. Okay, the second last one, we're gonna keep that as a back post. And then the very ending, keep it in the turning chain. So just turning your work, do you see how it's all working out? So then you just repeat row number two again. So just one, two, three, so that counts as a double crochet. You wanna keep the ribbing in the front, so keep that as a front post treble, or front post double. And then the next three in a row, because you're looking at the front side, is gonna be a back post double crochet and that creates another setting ridging. So this is all you need to do. You need to go to a total of 10 inches. You'll see the yarns changing out on its own um, when you're going to work with this and I think that you'll really enjoy this yarn. I actually really, really like it. Um, um, I'm not one for doing dishcloths but this uh, yarn has me really quite attracted to how it's changing and the textures of the yarn itself plus then the textures you can add to the yarn on your own with different stitches and I think that you could have a good time. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is how to do the crochet uh, scrubber waffle 
a dishcloth and I think that you'll love this pattern at the same time. Have a good one. We hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.